Hello again and welcome back to our course on PSC 14. In this section we're going to look at sharpening and blurring. Now as you're going to see later on in the course we can actually use filters for sharpening and blurring but we do have tools specifically for that purpose and that's what we're going to look at in this section. The picture that I'm showing you now, a picture of a flower and the reason I'm showing you this one is not that we're going to do something to it but that it shows very well how effective having a blurred background or any number of blurred objects in an image is because this tends to emphasize and draw the viewers eye to the sharp part of the image. Now what I've got here is another flower picture but in this case the green foliage in the background is not so blurred. It is in some places but not others and what I'd like to do is to slightly increase the blurriness of some of those long green leaves in the background and keep the flowers themselves as sharp as they are now. So I'm going to use the blur tool. Now in the bottom left hand corner of the enhance group it's a little family of tools blur, sharpen and smudge. I'm going to start by blurring some of the foliage in this picture I think one or two of the leaves in particular are a bit distracting from the flowers themselves, particularly this long green leaf here, so I'm going to blur this a little. Now it's very important not to overdo the blur, on the other hand, in this particular case, this is quite a strong piece of foliage here, quite eye-catching, and if I really want to emphasise the flowers, to blur it is going to take a little bit of work and time. So first of all, I need to choose my brush size. I'm going to make sure I choose a brush which goes over that piece of foliage, that will do the job. And then on this occasion I'm going to use quite a strong blur. The strength for the stroke is determined by the strength control. I'm going to try it on max. Now the first time you do this I suggest you experiment with different strengths. I know that this one is going to take a little bit of doing so I've set it at maximum strength to begin with. And what I'm going to do now is to zoom in and start blurring. In fact I think I can probably reduce the brush size a little. There we are. Don't forget everything inside that brush cursor there will get blurred. So it's important not to have it so big that you're blurring things that you don't want to blur. So I've applied the blur tool there quite a few times and you may not notice particularly how blurred it is. In fact, just to emphasize what I've achieved so far, if I go to the history panel, you notice multiple applications of the blur tool. Just look particularly at the tip of that leaf and I'll go back to open. So this is how this started. Look at that as I click on open and you'll see it's quite a significant difference actually and the end of that leaf is much less sharp now. I do find generally with the blur tool that it takes more effort perhaps than you think it would in order to achieve a level of blur but it is usually best done as a subtle effect and if you had a lot to do you might well be better off trying to do it using some kind of filter rather than using the tool. Let me just go back to the latest version again after those multiple blurs. Again look at the tip and you'll see how blurred it becomes and in terms of the overall view, let me just close the history panel, in terms of the overall view, I do think you can already see that that particular leaf is less conspicuous than it was before. So that's blurring. Next, let's take a look at sharpening. Now sometimes you may have one object which you want to sharpen. It may be non-sharp for a variety of reasons. It could have been slightly out of focus. It may be that in the case of animals, insects in this case, that there was a little bit of movement. As you'll see there are various ways of dealing with this but one way which often works is to just sharpen all or part of the object that you want to have sharp and prominent in the picture. Now in this case, let me just go out to the fit on screen. You can still see this butterfly pretty well. You can see the flowers around it. Two or three of the flowers are quite sharp. Several of them are blurred. It's quite a nice effect. It needs a crop here. It needs to have a lot of this 
space at the top on the right hand side taken out but other than that it's quite an interesting image but the butterfly is really quite blurry and I want to sharpen it now it's important with something like this not to overdo the sharpening any more than you want to overdo blurring but this butterfly definitely needs a bit of work on it so let's just zoom in again and if you look at the body of the butterfly it's a little bit blurred look at the blotches of color on its wings again you can see they're quite blurred what I'm going to do is to sharpen one wing and show the effect of that and you should get a good idea of how effective sharpening with the sharpen tool is so let's select the sharpen tool down here on the left you basically got the same kinds of control that you have with the blur tool I'm going to just choose a size of brush that's fine and I'll leave the setting here at 50% to begin with and there's one other control here which is important and that's protect detail minimizes pixelation while protecting details one of the problems with sharpening is that what PSE is trying to do is to get rid of the pixels with sort of intermediate colors the ones that cause the blurriness and what can happen when it does that is that you lose some of the detail in the image because pixels that are normally connected together start becoming disconnected and things start to break up I normally use the sharpen tool with protect details selected and I'm going to work on the right wing as we look at it now and just watch what happens as I brush over that a few times and of course you've got the left wing for comparison now the effect of sharpening I always find is a lot easier to see than the effect of blurring now I've probably slightly overdone it there but hopefully from that you can get the general idea it's a much sharper looking image now and provided you don't overdo it sharpening can very often work and sometimes a combination of sharpening one or more objects and blurring one or more other objects is a good combination in terms of drawing the viewers attention to the key points in an image so that's sharpening and finally let's take a quick look at the smudge tool this is not a tool that I use very much myself but I'll show you the sort of two basic functions I'll switch off the finger painting checkbox here I'll choose a large size of brush now I'm going to hold the brush over this object and I'm going to drag with the brush and show you the smudge effect and there it is I don't often find a use for that effect so I don't often use it the other option the finger painting option combines the smudge with the effect of finger painting with the foreground color which is currently black so let me just change that foreground color okay change the foreground color use the smudge tool out in the other direction and you get that sort of finger painting effect again not an effect that I use very much but you know that it's there that's the end of this section I'll see you in the next one hi I'm Molly thanks for watching are you looking to turn your photos into masterpieces get our complete 15-hour training course on Adobe Photoshop Elements 14 click the learn more button on the right I'll see you next week with additional videos